three steps to depart from God, or three ways to depart from God, or steps to, to three easy steps to depart from God, or steps to depart from God in three easy ways, or how to depart from God. Anyway, three steps to depart from God. You know, there's three steps to greatness. I've talked to you about how to guarantee a child will be successful when they graduate from high school is first of all, graduate from high school or college, get a good job, then get married and have children in that order. Statistics tell us that children that follow life in that order are almost guaranteed to have success in life. The biblical steps to greatness and success is Micah 6, 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. That's the Lord's steps to greatness. Uh, do justice, be a just person, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. But sadly, people, instead of following the steps to uh, greatness with God, success with God, success in life, uh, follow the steps to departing from God in our world today. Even Christians follow these steps uh, every day. Even churches follow these steps, <clears throat> these three steps in departing from God. First of all, first step, being asleep. The first step to a car wreck is falling asleep. Second step is not waking up <laughs> when you're startled, when you're driving a car. You know the story. Uh, Papa died sleep, peacefully in his sleep, but the rest of the passengers in, in the car were screaming. Uh, Hebrews 3.12. Anybody out there? I mean, <laughs> are my jokes that bad? <laughs> Did y'all have your naps? Now you don't get that quite right. You said Grandpa died in his sleep, but the other, not like the other passengers screaming. Okay, let's do it again. No, let's not. <laughs> Hebrews 3.12. Take heed, brethren. Take care, brothers and sisters, my friends. Be careful. Take heed means to be careful. Pay attention to. Be aware of. Matthew 24.4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Remember Jesus four times in Matthew 24 warned us about being deceived. So take heed, Ephesians 5, 14, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead. People can be like the walking dead, dead in their faith, dead in activity, dead in uh, life, just Christ who is our life. And people are walking around like zombies in their faith, not actively living their faith, not reading the Bible, not spending time in prayer, not going to church. What do they do spiritually? Nothing. Can you believe? And I find it hard to believe that people that call themselves Christians and were saved and trusted in Jesus Christ at one time in their life do nothing, no spiritual activities at all. Uh, they don't pray regularly. They don't read the Bible ever. They don't go to church. What do they do to feed their spiritual lives? Uh, we've got to wake up from being asleep. The first step is uh, being asleep. How to depart from God in three steps? The first step is to fall asleep. Listen, the Bible talks about sleep in, as, in a more serious manner sometimes. Sleep, some sleep because of disobedience in 1 Corinthians because sleep means death. Paul said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That is, we're not all going to die. Sleep can be a metaphor for death in the New Testament. But here it's talking about, and I'm talking about being aware, being alert, but the church is not. We've let wolves slip, slip in. Now, a shepherd. A shepherd cannot fall asleep on the sheep. Matter of fact, the shepherd would put his sheep up against a cliff or a he would try to find a place with two or three sides that his sheep could be corralled and he would lay in the entrance or a cave or a, a, little, a little valley or a uh, place that he could put his sheep safely that he would lay in the front and the, the wild animals would have to cross over him to get to the sheep. And he would not sleep or he would sleep very lightly. 
So he was being prepared and aware. Uh, sheep are helpless at defending themselves. And they're very prone to be led astray. Sheep will follow grass without being aware of their surroundings sometimes. Individual sheep will separate. What do wolves look for? They don't look for a big pack of sheep. Boy, there's a big pack. Let's jump right in the middle of them. No, they look for a wandering sheep or a sick sheep. That's what lions look for. A gazelle, not the whole pack. They don't want the healthy ones. They don't want to have to run themselves to death. They want to get a weak one. So they look for one that's straggling behind or culled from the pack because they're sick or not healthy or have a broken leg or something. That gazelle is a dead gazelle. That's who the lions feed on. But most of the time, gazelle will just wander too far. Wander too far. And then it's too late. They've not been paying attention to their surroundings. They're not, they're not paying attention to what they know they should be doing. They've let their faith slip. As Christians, we let our faith slip. It becomes no longer important to us. It becomes, no longer becomes vital to us. Christ is no longer our life. We don't live among Christians anymore. We hang out with the wrong people. We believe everything we hear on the television and wild internet stories. Everything should be proven out. There's, I get wild internet stories all the time. And... Uh, People accuse me of being of a conspiracy theorist. You ought to read some of the stories I get. That's a real conspiracy theory. Some of the things I get. I'm not, uh, I know, I've got enough sense to know what is real and what's not. How do you know? You research. The internet is the greatest place in the world to do research. You can find the truth, but you've got to be willing to research and listen. It takes time. You can't just listen to everything somebody says as gospel even a preacher how do we try if a preacher is telling the truth or not what's in your lap the bible we're to try it and prove it be bereans act 17 be a berean check them out test them out make them prove prove them by the word of god we can't allow ourselves to be asleep in this day and age christians need to wake up this is the worst time, worst time in history to be asleep on the Lord. It's the worst time in history to not take care of your spiritual life. Jesus is coming. He's coming for his church. Any second, any moment he could come. No man knows the day or the hour. Be ye therefore ready. In an hour you think not the son of man cometh. Why are people thinking not? I did a sermon about that a while ago. Think not. The think not generation. We don't think this is the time Jesus is going to come. So we're thinking not. We're not ready. We're not prepared. And he's going to find the church sleeping. A lot of people are going to be raptured and wake up and think. Find themselves in heaven and think what happened? And I'll be saying oh. I meant to do this, meant to do that. They reached the judgment seat of Christ. Lord, I meant to do this, but you came too quickly. And Jesus will say, I told you, behold, I come quickly. I come quickly. And he still, there are many millions will say, you came, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, Lord. Why didn't you wait? I gave you your whole life. I told you to be ready. I had that preacher tell you a thousand times, be ye therefore ready. Be ready. Quit being asleep. There's a verse in Proverbs, a little slumbering, a little folding of the hands. And you lose a little more sleep. Uh, when I worked at the post office, I kept the same alarm clock for my whole career. It's upstairs in the uh, garage. I still keep it as a, it doesn't, it works still, I don't use it. I don't use an alarm clock. Well, yes I do, actually I've got an alarm clock. It goes off at 7.40 every morning. And I don't have, uh, when I worked, the point is I didn't have a snooze button on my clock. I set it across the room. So I'd have to get up and shut it off. 
Cindy hated that alarm clock. Okay, he went, nyack, nyack, nyack. I didn't have a snooze button. When I went off, I got up and stayed up. There's no time to snooze. Got to get going. That's the way we should be as Christians. As Christians, the Lord has set the alarm. I'm coming. Look at the signs all around you. Look at what's going on in the world. I'm coming. Don't hit the snooze button. First, stop being asleep. Secondly, second step, unbelief. The second step to depart from God. The first step is being asleep. The second step is unbelief. Hebrews 3.12, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, that there be not, that there not be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart. That none of you have a heart so evil and unbelieving. God says, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, that's evil. That's wicked. You should believe in Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. It's an unbelieved, wicked heart. Matthew 13, 58. He did not many mighty works there because of what? Their unbelief. Second step is unbelief. First step, being asleep. Second step, I just don't believe that anymore. I don't believe in the rapture anymore. I don't believe in Bible prophecy anymore. Why? Have you read Ezekiel 37, 38, 39? Just those chapters alone would tell you the Bible is prophetic and it is coming true before our eyes. One third of the Bible is prophetic. Almost one third is prophetic in nature. And one half of those prophecies have already come true about Jesus' first coming. What does that tell you about his second coming? Second step to depart from God is not believing anymore. There's Christians I've talked to. I don't know if there's Christians or not. Uh, James tells us, or 1 John tells us that some departed from the faith because, uh, some have left us because they've departed from the faith. They don't believe. Uh, they never, I'm getting that wrong. They departed because they never were one of us in the first place. So first of all, Christians depart from the faith because, and don't believe anymore because they never did believe. And there's that certain few, and I think it's relatively small in number, that just, I just don't believe that anymore. Like these, uh, well, I don't know if they ever, I just don't think, a Christian that just comes out and says, I don't believe anymore, I don't think they ever were saved. I just don't think that's possible. But what we have in Christianity is I no longer believe that way anymore. I still believe in God and Jesus, but I don't believe that way. I believe now abortion is fine. And I now believe homosexuality is okay in the church. And it's okay to have uh, gay pastors and gay deacons. It's okay. Now, listen, I'm using this as an example. If you just tuned in, uh, I'm not saying that's okay. But that's what Christians are accepting today. They used to believe against those things, that that was a sin. Now, no, nah, I just don't believe. I just think God is a loving God. You got it part right. He is a God of love. He does love us. But he's also a God of holiness, righteousness, and judgment. You've got one out of four. That's like driving, trying to drive a car on one wheel. One, one wheel will get me everywhere I want to go. Yeah, but it's going to be a rough ride. And you better not run in anything the least bit slick. You're not going anywhere, right? Listen. Lest there be in any of you, any of you, an evil heart of unbelief. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible doesn't change. If God said it's a sin, then... It's a sin now. It doesn't change. It's the word of God. If God said, now I'm going to change things up. Here's what we're changing. He didn't do that. He gave new revelation called the, we went from law to grace. But the law and grace are the same thing. You have to have sin before you can have grace. So it's, he didn't change anything. He just showed us how we can get from law. We've all sinned to grace. I'll save everyone that trusts in me. No questions asked. God didn't change anything. The Old and New Testaments are a con continuity. They flow. And the common thread is the blood of the Lamb. That's the common thread of the Bible. 
That did not change and will never change. Praise God it won't change or we'd have no hope. Second step is unbelief. Unbelief. How do people come to the place where they change their minds? You know why? They don't read the Bible. It goes back to number one. Falling asleep on the word of God. Falling asleep on going to church. Falling asleep on hanging around Christians. Dedicated Christians. Real Christians. Who believe and love Jesus and trust in him. And believe in his word. And, and believe that he's coming again. And look for him to come again. That's the blessing guaranteed in the Bible. If we're looking for Jesus. And I talk to Christians all the time that don't believe these things anymore. I read about them all the time. They don't believe anymore. I, I just don't believe the Bible is the word of God. That's the worst a Christian can say. If they are a Christian. And I believe some Christians have come to the place where they just don't trust or read the Bible or believe it anymore. They've been influenced by the God of this world who's very hard at work. He is very, very hard at work. He has thrown all, all of his cards on the table. He is heading for the last roundup. People are going to be deceived. That is a given because Jesus warned us, take heed that no man deceive you. And we're getting deceived every day. Christians drop out and quit and decide to just, eh, too much going on. I'm just going to hide in my cocoon. I'll be safe there. I'm just going to hide from all. I don't want to hear it because it's just too depressing. It's too scary to talk about Jesus' return. Scary? You talk about scary. Let me read Revelation 6 through 19 for you. You want to be here for that? I've heard people say on the internet, I'd really rather not be raptured. I want to be here to lead them all to the Lord. <laughs> Buddy, your head will be the first one rolling down the sidewalk. Jesus has taken care of that. 144,000 Jewish evangelists, two witnesses and an angel. You think you can top that? Matter of fact, these witnesses are sealed for a reason so they won't lose their head. Even the two witnesses get killed and raptured. The angel, he's up in the sky. They probably try to shoot him down too. We can't get to him. I'm going to lead them all to Christ. This is escapism, the rapture. You're welcome to stay. But you're not going to get to. If you want to stay, you shouldn't have become a Christian. <laughs> you should have waited. The second step is unbelief. People get so, uh, you know, I don't mean to step on anybody's uh, toes that I, down through the years. Nobody here. I mean, you guys are humble. And uh, I, one thing I hear you guys say all the time is, I love studying the Bible. I wish I knew more. I wish I could learn more. And that's the way we ought to be. Always hungry. But there's some people that think they've arrived. And once they arrive, they're like they're the John Wayne of Baptists. Once they arrive, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to take care of it. I'll herald Jesus' return. I'll throw a whip around him and bring him right to this earth. Because of my greatness. You know, and but. Some people believe the church is going to get so good and so wonderful that Jesus will come. The church has to usher in Christ. There's people that believe that it's the church. There's no rapture. The church just gets better and better and a worldwide revival comes and then Jesus returns because we cleaned the church up, the world up. The church cleaned it up. They get that from uh, somewhere besides the Bible. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where it's at exactly, but they're confusing Israel. They say Israel is no longer, Israel is the church. It's not. Israel is Israel. Babylon is Babylon. Israel is Israel. There is no, uh, when the Bible says a place, that's usually exactly what that place means. And for Israel, it's always Israel. Israel's never the church. Never. Being asleep. So these people, being asleep, unbelief, these people don't believe in the rapture and they think the church is going to clean it all up, make it great. 
Well, the church isn't doing very good right now. We lost several hundred churches last year that just closed and have never reopened. How's that? Are they? We did great during the pandemic. Whoa, the church was a mighty army. Not. <laughs> we cowered behind our masks and cowered in our homes, afraid to die. The one people in the world that know where they're going when they die have all the assurance in the universe and we hid at home afraid to die. Not this church. We didn't meet for six weeks because we thought we were doing the right thing when we realized we were being duped. We've not closed a Sunday since and Lord willing, unless the Gestapo comes and locks our doors, we'll be open. If they lock our doors here, we'll find a basement somewhere and meet there. And if they close that, we'll find, we'll find some place to meet. Third step from, to depart from God is to depart from God. Hebrews 3.12, in departing from the living God, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. They refuse to trust and rely on the Lord, a heart that turns away from the living God, that your evil heart will turn you away from the living God. 2 Timothy 4.10, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Demas and these other two guys deserted Paul. The third step is departing, walking away or stopping. We have being asleep and just not believing anymore. The third step is just walking away. I quit. Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort one another daily while it's called today. In face with these people that are asleep and don't believe anymore and are walking away from the church, what should we do? We should continually encourage one another every day. As long as there's a day, there's an opportunity. As long as we're above ground, we're going to encourage people to hang in there because Jesus has the world by his hand. Satan is the God of this world, little g. Jesus is the creator of the universe. And I'm going to stick with him and his word. Uh, Satan is not my God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Instead, we've got to help one another every day as long as the word today. As long as you wake up and say, good morning, Lord. Instead of, good Lord, it's morning. Uh, we're okay. <laughs> we have a chance to encourage someone. You are an encouragement. When you get up, and you live for the Lord, and you read your Bible, nobody sees that, nobody hears that. The Spirit of the Lord is everywhere in encouraging people. I believe He encourages others because, He encourages me because you've encouraged me by what you do every day. I think the Lord just lifts us all up. Yes. He lifts us all up. You lift yourself up and get out of bed and come before God in prayer and in reading the Bible. He's going to lift up others. You're not the only one. I exhort, but exhort one another daily. Listen, the third step is departing. So we should help those who've departed to come back while we can. There comes a time when you can't help those who've departed. That's Hebrews 6, chapter 4, 5, and 6. Uh, turn there if you want to real quick. I know we preached this before, but I want to go over it very, very quickly. Uh, some people can depart so far that we can't help them anymore. That's the, the third step is departing. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again and to repentance. Okay, it says it's impossible. Verse 4, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, all that, that tells us that people have trusted in God and Jesus Christ, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Now, as we read on in Hebrews chapter 6, we realize that these people are nigh unto burning. They're not going to burn in hell. These are people, as Hebrews chapter 6 is talking about, uh, Christians and the problem with Christians uh, falling away. So, 
Only God can bring those back that have gone so far as to crucify their faith in Christ. And by their lives, they've shamed, they've shamed the gospel of Christ. If they're saved, we can't bring them back by anything we say or do, but only God can. We have to turn them over to God. Didn't the apostle Paul do that? To the Corinthian man that had sinned with his mother-in-law? And... Turned them over to God. And what happened? They fell asleep because of disobedience. This is complete departure from the faith and leads to sleeping or early death. Some sleep because of disobedience. Ananias and Sapphira. They got plum messed up, didn't they? Hebrews 3.13. Lest any of you be, lest any of you be, be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We go back to... to uh, Verse 12, take heed, it says, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. None of you will be hardened or into rebellion by deceitfulness of sin. Sin is very clever, very glamorous, very sophisticated. Sin is not stupid. It's very glamorous. It's very tempting. If, how could you be tempted if sin wasn't clever, glamorous, and sophisticated? They... Show beer advertisements with young people with great bodies having a great time in the, on the beach. Beer commercials. And everybody says, well, that's the thing to do to have fun. They don't show what a real beer drinker is sitting on his easy chair watching a football game with his t-shirt, white t-shirt, nasty in his belly showing. If they was a, have one, have a, what is the name of a beer? You passed the test. It took you three seconds to name one. Very good. You passed it. Budweiser. Have a Budweiser and you look like this guy. <laughs> How many's going to buy a beer like that? Nobody. Listen, sin is sophisticated. It's alluring. <clears throat> it's glamorous. It's clever. Don't be deceived. The third step is departing. When we, de we depart because we've been deceived by lies and lust. Deceived by lies and lust. Matthew 24, 4. Take heed that no man deceive you. First step. Being asleep. Second step is unbelief. Third step is departing. Three steps to depart from God. 